This reading is from the Columbus City Schools Winter Break Activity Packet. Let's read the passage together and remember to answer the questions at the end. An excerpt from Raggedy Ann and the Painter from Raggedy Ann and Andy, A Read Aloud Treasury by Johnny Gruel. In this story, Marcella's mother decides to have her room painted. When the painters arrive, one of them is a young boy. He sees Raggedy Ann on the shelf and begins playing with her and tossing her into the air. But the young fellow threw Raggedy Ann up into the air once too often, and when she came down, he failed to catch her. She came down with a splash, head first into a bucket of oily paint. I told you, said the older painter, now you are in for it. My goodness, I didn't mean to do it, said the young fellow. What should I do with her? Better put her back on the shelf, replied the other. So Raggedy was placed back upon the shelf, and the paint ran from her head and trickled down upon her dress. After breakfast, Mistress came into the nursery and saw Raggedy all covered with paint, and she began crying. The young painter felt sorry and told her how it had happened. If you will let me, he said, I will take her home with me, clean her up tonight, and bring her back the day after tomorrow. So Raggedy was wrapped in a newspaper that evening and carried away. All the dolls felt sad that night without Raggedy Ann near them. Poor Raggedy! I could have cried when I saw her all covered with paint, said the French doll. She didn't look like our dear old Raggedy Ann at all, said the tin soldier, who wiped the tears from his eyes so that they would not run down on his arms and rust them. The paint covered her lovely smile and nose, and you could not see the laughter in her shoe button eyes, said the Dutch doll. And so the dolls talked that night and the next, but in the daytime when the painters were there, they kept very quiet. The second day Raggedy was brought home, and the dolls were all anxious for night to come so that they could sit and talk with Raggedy Ann. At last the painters left and the house was quiet, for Mistress had been in and placed Raggedy on the shelf with the other dolls. Tell us all about it, Raggedy dear, the dolls cried. Oh, I am ever so glad I fell in the paint, cried Raggedy after she had hugged all the dolls, for I have had the happiest time. The painter took me home and told his mamma how I happened to be covered with paint, and she was very sorry. She took a rag and wiped off my shoe button eyes, and then I saw that she was a very pretty, sweet-faced lady, and then she got some cleaner and wiped off most of the paint on my face. But you know, Raggedy continued, the paint had soaked through my rag head and had made the cotton inside all sticky and soggy, and I could not think clearly. And my yarn hair was all matted with paint. So the kind lady took off my yarn hair and cut the stitches out of my head and took out all the painty cotton. It was a great relief, although it felt queer at first and my thoughts seemed scattered. She left me in her work basket that night and hung me out upon the clothesline the next morning once she had washed the last of the paint off. And while I hung out on the clothesline, what do you think? We could never guess, all the dolls cried. Why, a dear little Jenny Wren came and picked enough cotton out of me to make a cute little cuddly nest in the grape arbor. Wasn't that sweet, cried all the dolls. Yes, indeed it was, replied Raggedy Ann. It made me very happy. Then, when the lady took me in the house again, she stuffed me with lovely, nice new cotton all the way from my knees up, sewed me up, and put new yarn on my head for hair, and, 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 it's a secret, 
said Raggedy Ann. Oh, tell us the secret, cried all the dolls as they pressed closer to Raggedy Ann. Well, I know you will not tell anyone who would not be glad to know about it, so I will tell you the secret and why I am wearing my smile a trifle broader, said Raggedy Ann. The dolls all said that Raggedy Ann's smile was indeed a quarter of an inch wider on each side. When the dear lady put the new white cotton in my body, said Raggedy Ann, she went to the cupboard and came back with a paper bag, and she took from the bag ten or fifteen little candy hearts with mottos on them. And she hunted through the candy hearts until she found a beautiful red one, which she sewed up in me with the cotton. So that is the secret, and that is why I am so happy. Feel here, said Raggedy Ann. All the dolls could feel Raggedy Ann's beautiful new candy heart, and they were very happy for her. After all had hugged each other good night and had cuddled up for the night, the tin soldier asked, Did you have a chance to see what the motto on your new candy heart is, Raggedy Ann? Oh, yes, replied Raggedy Ann. I was so happy I forgot to tell you. It has I love you printed upon it in nice blue letters. In this passage, we find two words in the word bank. The first word is trifle, which means a small amount. The other word is motto, which means a short saying written on or attached to something. Now it's time to go back to your packet and answer all of the questions. Think carefully about your answers.